Great. Thank you very much. Uh, this question is for uh, Rashad. Rashad, how are you? Good. How about you? We're doing well. My first question for you is uh, how anxious are you to, uh, to uh, finally get back into the Octagon? I know it's been some time, and during that time, you know, you've had your opponent changed about three different times. Just kind of talk about that. And, you know, I guess no matter who the opponent is, how ready you are for, uh, for uh, this fight. I'm very anxious to get back in the cage. You know, it's been a, a long 14 months, a lot of up and downs um, inside, and the, inside and outside the cage. So I'm looking to get in there and just get used to competing again, you know. It's been a long time. I love to compete. And uh, being out for 14 months, it, it was hard for me to do um, – I had no idea I was going to be out this long, but, you know, things happen and circumstances arise. So, but, um, you know, I'm just happy to get back in there, and I'm happy that Theo Ortiz took the fight, and I, and I got a chance to fight. As a follow-up, I just want to say um, you faced Tito before. Um, that was a while back. What do you expect to uh, see out of him, you know, next Saturday, um, especially given, you know, what he's done uh, in his last fight here against Ryan Bader? I think he's going to try to come out a little bit aggressive. Uh, He's, you know, he's, he's um, you know, believing himself a little bit more. You know, he just got his win a couple months ago, so he's still riding off that momentum. But he's feeling good. You know, his body's feeling good, so he says. So I expect to see a Tito Ortiz, uh, you know, re-energized and ready to go in there and put up a good fight. Thanks, Rashad. I appreciate it. Next, we'll hear from Steve Fettel with Asbury Park Press. Hi, my question is for uh, Tito. Tito, it's been a, a decade since fans in this northeast area, the New Jersey, Philadelphia market, uh, were seeing you defending your title in those Atlantic City and Meadowlands shows. Uh, what were your memories of, of that time in your career and those shows, and what is it like to be coming back to this area a decade later in such a high-profile way? Well, of course, uh, the memories uh, that I remember is watching the Twin Towers uh, before they went down. Um, that was one of the memories of our cutting weight and just looking at our tribes going, God, those buildings are huge. And then coming back years and years later that they were completely gone. But at the same time, we were fighting in front of an audience that were diehard fans when the sport was very, very new. And now it's just uh, it's a whole different new business completely. And I'm still at the top of my game. And um, I just can't wait to go back to the East Coast and fight for all my fans, and especially in Philly. Um, this is something that's a story that... I will fulfill it 100%, and I'm very, very excited. You know, Rashad's a tough opponent, number one contender. Um, I'm going to go and I'm going to fight with all my heart and soul and, and do what I do, and that's entertain, man, and get my hand raised. Thank you very much. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, Star One will go next to John Morgan with MMAJunkie.com. Thank you very much. If I could start with Tito, please. Uh, Tito, uh, when this whole story came out, you know, Dana mentioned that you initially turned down the fight and then kind of came back and revisited and said, you know what, I, I, I would like to take that fight. Can you talk about maybe what happened in the interim, you know, kind of who you spoke with, what the advice was to, to get you to change your mind and come back and take this fight? Well, you know, I mean, I, I was getting ready for Minotaur and I got cut. Um, I got 22 stitches above my head. Um, I ended up having to take about a month off, and then I got right back into camp again. And so I put, you know, 10 weeks in for Ryan Bader. And so it's been, you know, a good almost five months of training that I put into it, so I've taken a month off. After I beat Bader, I was, you know, top of the world, I felt. You know, I wanted to indulge in the glory. Um, I took a week off. I came home. I was relaxed, you know, watching TV. Danny gave me a call. And I was with my family. You know, I miss my family. I haven't been around that much just because of training. I mean, you put in six-hour days, six days a week. You put in the hard work. And when he asked me if my first instinct was like, no, I mean, I got to take care of some stuff at home. I got business, my, you know, punishment nutrition, my clothing company, my gym. There's so much other business stuff that I've been kind of just planting the seeds and watering to watch them grow. And I had to take care of some of that stuff. Well, um, you know, the fighter in me kind of, doubted it was like you know what maybe you should fight you're in great shape i never got touched sparring's been great my wrestling's been really good i'm strong i have no injuries my back and neck have been awesome and so it took me to, to, to think about it you know of course i said i talked to jenna um you know i talked to my training partners i talked to my coach and we kind of just sat down and said you know what let's do this here's an opportunity that we're never going to have again dana asked me you know to help him out 
they needed my help, and I want to show that I'm a, you know, a businessman for them, and I stepped up. And, and talk about, obviously, since then you've had this, uh, this car wreck, a little fender bender that, that we've seen everywhere. Uh, man, this car has suffered so many injuries along the way. Was there even a moment uh, when that happened that there was a concern that, you know, I'm not going to be able to fight? No, not even a doubt. You understand, man, I did a Long Beach Grand Prix, and I crashed four times. <laughs> and I was hitting walls. I mean, a car, I mean, you understand, man, on my honeymoon, my first marriage, I got hit by a bus going 30. And I fought, and I defended my world title against the Yuki Kondo literally four months later. Um, stuff like that doesn't hurt me. You know, I think what hurts is just repetition of training. You know, uh, I have had spinal problems just from repetition of shooting doubles and getting slammed and, and doing this stuff for so many years. I mean, I've been competing for 14 years now, but I've got those things healed. I talked to William Smith who did the surgeries. I have no doubt in anything anymore. I mean, there's no doubt in my injuries at all. I don't question my shots. I don't question my take down defense. I don't question anything anymore. And I think that's just doing the right physical therapy and having the best surgeon possible in the world who did my surgeries and just being confident. So, you know, it was, it was I rear in somebody. It was a mistake on my part. Um, and I probably shouldn't have been paying attention to what I was paying attention to. And I looked up and, bam, I hit someone. And it was an expensive car. <laughs> and it was my bad. You know, I was really, really bummed about it. But at the same time, uh, you know, it could be paid for. You know, thank God for insurance. All right, so no no physical effects whatsoever then? No, not at all. No, zero. I mean, when my son was in my car with me. That's what pretty much what scared me more than anything. I care less about the car. What really scared me was my son. And, and he was like, oh, staring at the wind, knocked out in a second. I'm like, you're right, you're right. And he was like, yeah, I'm okay. And then we got out of the car, and he was fine. And But uh, that's what scared me more than anything. But, you know, thank God, you know, nothing happened. And, you know, everything is just really material, and it can be paid for. Absolutely. Thanks, Tito. If I could go to Rashad now, please. Uh, Rashad, obviously, you know, Tito's game plan uh, throughout his career has been pretty consistent, strong wrestling, you know, great ground and pound, but uh, showed some, some decent striking in the fight against Bader. Obviously, I think that was, was what led to the finish. Uh, what do you evaluate when you look at uh, Tito's striking? You know, how do you consider that, and, and do you feel like that's something that's going to possibly threaten you in this fight? You know, uh, I think Tito's definitely got a lot better in the striking of what I've seen in his last few fights. Um, just, just from his movement and, and uh, where he is after he finishes his combinations. But, you know, I'm not, I'm not really worried, worried about his striking, to be honest. Um, I'm, I, I think the, for the most part, what I need to worry about is just, you know, my own execution. And, and as long as I worry about my own execution, it doesn't matter what Tito Ortiz does. Absolutely. And Rashad, is there anything personal for you to prove in this fight? I mean, going back to the first fight, obviously it's a draw on the record books, but, uh, you know, had it not been for a point deduction, it it wouldn't have gone that way. Uh, You know, do you feel like there's anything to prove for you at this point? Is there anything personal in this at all? No, it's nothing personal. I mean, you know, I'm going to go in there and put some work in and try to look great uh, for myself more than anything. And, you know, because I've been off for so long, I want want to, you know, go out and, and, uh, just, just really, you know, feel good in there and and take my time and, and be patient and you know not try to rush in things, not try to rush for things. Just try to uh, try to see where the fight goes. You know, I don't I don't have in my mind where I want to take the fight yet. So I just want to go in there and see what you know what Tito Ortiz is doing, where where the fight gonna go, and then take it to where I want to uh, where, where I want to go. It can ask what your memories or, I guess, what your feelings on that first fight were. I mean, again, it's a, it's a draw, so it's not a loss for you, but is there any part of you that felt like maybe it was a loss, or did you feel good about that performance at the time? I felt horrible about the performance. You know, I felt horrible about the performance for years. Um, it's one of those fights you just want to get back. Uh, just young and inexperienced at that level, you know, I really didn't get my mind wrapped around the situation until it was a little bit too late, but I'm a long ways from that right now. All right. Thank you both, gentlemen. We'll go next to Dan Gelson with the Associated Press. Uh, hi, Tito. Uh, D- uh, Dan Gelson here. Um, Dana White said that uh, fans haven't been this excited about you and you and UFC in, you know, five, six years now. Um, do, you, do you agree with that? Do you feel like your, your popularity is, is back where, where it was, or do you feel you ever lost it? And how would you describe your relationship with with Dana at this point and um, how it's gone, you know, from up to down to look like maybe back up again? You know, um, with me, my, my image, uh, it's one of those things, man. People love me or people hate me. 
And I don't think my popularity has gone anywhere but up, of course. Uh, but at the same time, you know, there's still those haters and there's still the people who support me. And those are the people who I support back. And I just one of those things, man, when it comes to fight time, I I go in and I compete. I go in and compete and I try to get my hand raised. You know, the last five years, it's been a little problem of doing that. You know, I came up with a draw, a split decision loss, a decision loss, another decision loss, and I compete against the top guys in the world. And, you know, um, I come up a little short, and I kept my head and my nose to the grindstone. You know, I got my surgeries done, and I kept my nose to the grindstone. I, I never doubted myself, and I just want to show people that with hard work and dedication, you can achieve anything. And I'm continuing doing it each and every day in training. Um, and between me and Dana, we're really, really good. It's been good. Um, I'm very, very happy. You know, they're supporting me, and the positive reinforcement I'm getting by them is just making me that much better in the gym. And I love it. I, I thrive on stuff like this. It's the type of stuff that I, I died for when I was a kid, man. And it's just nice to have a positive reinforcement behind you, knowing that you're going to do well, and um, you're going to perform at my highest performance. Thank you. Our next question comes from Evan Burgos with Comcast Sportsnet Philadelphia. Hey guys, um, Evan Evan Burgos here, CSN Philly. Uh, kind of a question for both of you. I'll start with Tito. Melody, I think we uh, we lost our caller there. He pops back in. We'll reprompt him to the top. In the meantime, let's go ahead and go to Ben. And Ben, folks, your line is now open. Hello? Sir, your line is open. Okay, great. Uh, my question is for Rashad. Uh, Rashad, talk a little bit about how it's been moving your training camp around, uh, you know, heading out there to Florida and, and setting up shops somewhere new. Uh, training has been great, man. I got some really good training partners out here, um, really good coaches, and, and I couldn't be happier, you know. Um, when I came out here to South Florida, I didn't really know how things were going to be, you know, trying to come, you know, coming from Greg Jackson's camp. Uh, I was just, you know, not thinking that there could be another situation that can rival with that one. But uh, I was pleased to find out that things here is, is very good and, and um, got a great team, great training partners, and we got this energy in the gym that's just, you know, uh, it is amazing. And when you have a gym that has great energy and you have great training practices and, and, and it's just fun to be in, it makes the grind of training that much easier and it makes you grow that much more as an athlete because you don't mind putting in the extra time being in the gym because it's fun to be there. Uh, I know you said uh, that you were done with Jackson. That, that seemed at a time when maybe the, the wound there was a little fresher. I mean, now that you've had a little more time to think about it and, and see what life is like out at another gym, do you think that there's a chance that you'll ever reconcile and go back there, or do you still think that you're done forever? Honestly, there's really no reason for me to go back. You know, I mean, I think I've found training elsewhere that's better. You know, I mean, it's nothing against Greg and those guys. I love those guys at Jackson. But at the same time, if you find training that's better elsewhere, then why then why go backwards? Right. And lastly, a question for Tito. I mean, we talked a little bit about the, the first fight. Rashad gave his opinions on it. I mean, obviously it was a draw, but you got to at the point for kind of holding on to the fence. And some people kind of made the case that, you know, that's almost like a win for you to play it's kind of taken away from you out there on a little bit of a technicality. I mean, when you look back on that aspect of that, how do you feel about it, and how do you think that the second fight around is going to be a lot different? Well, I think it's a lot different on both sides. You know, I think Rashad has matured as a fighter a lot. Um, he's gotten a lot better. I watched, you know, from that fight to his last fight against Rampage, I just, his shots are a lot better, and uh, he's a lot faster. Um, I've gotten a lot better. You know, my boxing skills, of course, and my wrestling takedown and defense have gotten better. You know, I've gotten stronger with uh, not having my injuries anymore. It's nice to not have a back problem. It's nice to get out of bed and, and go into want and train. Um, before, I didn't want to. You know, I'd get out of bed. I feel like an old man getting out of bed. And, you know, when I got everything fixed, uh, I'm hungry, man. It's just one of those things I feel a lot better. I don't feel like a 40-year-old man anymore. You know, I feel like a 30-year-old man who's in great shape and strong. And I wait where, where I want it to be. Um, and I don't really pay attention to that fight because that fight was such a long time ago. And, you know, um, I made the mistake by grabbing on the fence, and um, I'm going to try to correct a lot of mistakes that I did and making sure that I don't let Rashad get in on me and, you know, just try to defend, try to defend and uh, 
do what I do best, and that's punish, man. And, you know, like I say, I really don't pay attention to that fight that much because it's such a long time ago when we both matured both as fighters. And uh, it's just one of those things that I look at that, you know, on August 6th, it would be just that much better, and I'll be having my hand raised. All right, thanks, guys. We'll go to Evan Burgos with Comcast Sportsnet Philadelphia. Hey, guys, question for both of you. Um, Philadelphia, historically revered as a, a, a pretty, you know, popular fight town. A lot of big money fights have come through here. Um, does it mean anything to you to have this fight back in Philly? Uh, Rashad coming off a layoff and Tito kind of trying to um, go through a little resurgence here. Did you think about that at all, where you're fighting and what the atmosphere might be like in Philadelphia in particular? Um, oh, go ahead, Tito. I mean, I mean, I look at it, you know, I've always been a huge Rocky fan, man. And it's kind of funny because in my gym, I assume the guy's bathroom, there's a Rocky picture of him standing at the top of the stairs. And it just, does everything really happen in life for a reason? And that's my question, all right? I, I, I put in the training. I feel great. Um, I'm running through my training partners. Um, and it's just one of those things that I think Philly – it's just going to feed that much more and more emotion into me. And I'm very thankful for it. You know, I think that's one of the reasons why I did take the fight, knowing that I'm healthy and I'm willing to fight and I'm willing to step up. And uh, I, I want to put on an entertaining fight. You know, I want to get my hand raised again. And against Rashad is one of the best guys in the world right now. So I think I'm capable and I, and I know I'm capable to do it in Philly. Rashad, do you have anything to say? You know, I've never been to Philly before, but, you know, like, like Tito was saying, I'm a huge Rocky fan. Well, and I, and that's one of uh, you know, that's, you know, fighting in Philly. Uh, is I just think about Rocky. But besides that, you know, there's a lot of fighters out of Philly that that I'm huge fans of. You know, Bar Bernard Hopkins and and, um, and those guys. But uh, you know, it's great to be in it and fighting in a city that has that great fighting history because then those fans, you know they get up for it, and it makes it that much easier for me to get up for it when i got to go out there because you can feel the energy. You know, right before I walk out and do that long walk to the cage, the energy that I get, the minute those curtains raise, the minute they play that music and the fans are just going crazy, that's the energy that I take when I go into that cage, and it's very important. And having a city like Philly with that great fight history would definitely bring me at my highest before I step into the cage. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. We'll go next to Sergio Nunn with USA Today. Uh, yeah. Uh, Rashad, you just mentioned that uh, you thought your training is better now than it was at Jackson's. Can you go into that a bit? What makes it uh, better than uh, what you used to have? Well, when you get to a certain point, um, you really need a lot of time, you know, and, and um, coaches that spend – a lot of time with you, and you make sure you get the one-on-one, -on -one, and you're just seeing different different things. And, uh, you know, after being with, uh, at Jackson for a while, you know, with so many people at the gym, it just got harder and harder for for, for me to get that time, you know. And uh, when, you be in, when you're in a situation like that, sometimes it gets a little bit stagnant, you know, and just like one of those things that, you're just like, okay, well, how am I to reinvent myself if I'm pretty much learning the same kind of thing and I'm not, I'm not getting the time that I need? So you kind of get stagnant and you learn and you kind of get a little bit disinterested. So it was good to come out here to just have a freshness and and be with guys that that are thinking outside the box and, and thinking outside the box in different areas and people coming from different areas of the world you know, training with me and showing me different things. So that was the biggest part, and that made the biggest difference in this camp. Okay. And uh, for Tito, um, you know, given that you're taking this fight on short notice, um, does that relieve any uh, expectations from, you know, how much of a lose or of a no-lose situation is this for you? Well, you know, I just think it's one of those things. It's, I'm a fighter, man. My, my job is fighting. And I'm going to go on, I'm going to do my job. And... You know, to me, I don't think there's a lose, no lose, win, win, whatever situation. I think I'm just going to go in and do what I do best. That's fight, man. I'm, I'm healthy. I came off the last fight. And I bounced right back into training camp again. You know, I took a week off, which is, I think, a blessing in disguise. I was able to heal for a week. Um, 
you know, just my muscles and everything. And my timing came back really, really quick. Uh, you know, my shape came it was better than it was before the last fight. So it's just one of those things that, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm ready for a war. You know, I'm, I'm ready for the best Rashad, as he says in all his interviews, that this is the best he's ever been, and I'm ready for that. And I'm excited for that. And, uh, so there's going to be a three-round war, and, you know, someone's hands get it raised, and I know it's going to be mine. Now, Rashad has said that he thinks he's better than you in all areas. Uh, what do you think is your advantage over him? That he's better Hello? than me in all areas? Is that the uh, yeah. Uh, well, Rashad said that, and I'm asking you what you think your advantage is over him. Um, my advantage will be my heart, of course, 100%. Uh, he's fast, yes, I'll give him that. His wrestling skills are good, yes, I'll give him that. His boxing skills have got better, um, but I'm prepared. I'm prepared for for anything and everything, um, and I'm going to go in, you know, focused, uh, mentally positive, knowing that my hands are going to be raised. You know, I'm I'm not going to explain what I think his strengths are. Um, no reason to. Um, I just kind of did, you know, I guess layman terms for you, so you can understand. But when it comes to fight time, I'll show you why how much better I am. Okay, great. Thank you. We'll go next to Chuck Yarbrough with Cleveland Plain Diller. Hi, Tito. This is Chuck. Thank you very much for doing this. My question for you is, is kind of like this. The, before the Bader fight, there was kind of an implication that you were done. Um, then there's some sort of justification, I'm not done yet. Who's going to know when you're done? How are you going to know? And what kind of terms do you want to go out on? You're 36, kind of long in the tooth. Well, you look at it. Look at Waddell. When Waddell was running as champion, he was 36. When we tour was running as champion, he was 36. Why do I got to go? Um, just because I lost a few fights by a split decision and decisions and draws, I mean, I, that's, that doesn't make any sense to me. I think I should go on my own terms when I know it's time for me to go. I mean, like I say, I'm healthy, I'm good, I'm ready to fight, I want to fight, I have the aggression, I have, uh, you know, I have the heart and determination to get in the gym every day and, and push myself. I mean, people don't understand. People see what, what's inside the cage when it's fight time. They don't see the training that we do in the gym and how hard it is and how difficult mentally and physically it is on our body, but I'm willing to do it. I'm willing to step up and do it. So when it's time for me to retire, you guys will know. You know, and it's it'll, it'll be soon, you know, the next uh, couple of years possibly. You know, I'm not going to be 40 years old fighting, no way. You know, I've made other businesses, of course, and I'm a businessman. I understand it, but, you know, my heart is in fighting right now. I love to fight. I mean, I, I want to get in there. I want to compete against the best guys in the world, and Dan is giving me that opportunity by competing with Rashad Evans. And, uh, you know, when... I feel this story that I have in my mind right now. Um, you know, I want to get a world title on my waist, man. That's my goal. My goal is to try to get a world title on my waist again. I was the longest reigning light heavyweight champion, and there's nothing more right now in my mind and my heart that I would love to do than have a world title on my waist again. Okay, I'd like to follow up a little bit with that. You mentioned the, the businesses and things like that, which is very cool. You've got to have something to do after you're done. But is there uh, any kind of possibility that some of those things got in the way in addition to the injuries um, that might be factors in in the uh, stuff leading up to the Bader fight? No, not at all. You know, um, I have people who help me and, and work on, you know, that side of it, the business side of it. You know, I come in and make sure for the ideas and for everything, you know, of course, my clothing company for the logos, all the stuff that's being printed. I just o oversee everything and make, their, make sure everything comes from my heart. Um, and as far as the injuries, I mean, I haven't had any problems at all since after my back, my neck surgery. Um, everything's been really, really good. You know, I might have hopped in the fight against Hammer a little quick, but it's just one of those things. It's the fighter in me, man. I, I want to compete. When people doubt me and say that I, I'm not able to do it because I had surgery, I want to prove them wrong. And when I was getting ready for the Minotaur fight, I felt great. I was in great shape. My wrestling was good. But, you know, mistakes happen. Um, everything will happen for a reason. I got cut. I got 22 stitches in my head. I, I could do nothing about it. Um, this was three weeks before the fight. So I had to pull out, which was a blessing in disguise because I got put against a tougher opponent who was a ranked guy, and I stopped him in a minute 56 seconds, something that Johnny Bones Jones couldn't do. So it's just one of those things that now that uh, I'm, I'm riding on uh, success, man. I'm riding on something that's positive, and it's motivation and knowing that uh, I have the heart, I have the will, I have the mind, and I have the, the body to, to compete against the best guys in the world to get my hand raised. Okay, now one last question for both of you guys. The pop, the sport is growing in popularity exponentially. The the Toronto um, fight showed that. What role do either of you two, as pretty much legends in the sport, 
have you played in that? Do you think? Let's you know, I mean, I, I, I've, I've been doing it since '97, man. I've paved the way for a lot of fighters. You know, business uh, fight game. You know, um, you see Rashad, he, he talks well when it's fight time. He knows how to sell a fight. And I really look at it as, you know, I used to do a lot of that myself just to kind of help, you know, this brand get where it is today. And now it's like my name sells fights. I don't need to talk trash anymore. It's about fighting. And when it comes to fight time, I let my fist do the talking. And I'm very thankful for Spike TV of having the ultimate fighter. Dan White working as hard as he does. Lorenzo Fertitta putting up everything to make this business what it is, to have us fighters fight the level that we do. Um, you know, when it's entertainment time, it's us as entertainers to go out and fight and put on a show for the fans to watch on pay-per-view. Okay, Tito, could you take that? I mean, no, uh, Rashad, could you take that, please? Yeah, I mean, like, like Tito was saying, you know, it's, it's with the work of uh, Dana White and, and uh, the Fertitas. And, and, but, but the Ultimate Fighter show has done so much, and to be a part of that, for me, um, has been, you know, it's been everything and it's been my career. Uh, having a chance to compete on the show, and then having a chance to actually coach on the show, you know, it, it's uh, it was it was truly a great experience. But I think it's one of those things that that uh, helped the sport grow a lot. And then you have guys like T. Ortiz and, and uh, Randy Couture's and the Chuck Liddell's. Those guys are the ones who paved the way. Those are the guys who I was watching when I was in college. You know, and these are the guys that that I guess were the, the biggest stars, but still. You know, I mean, you, you, there's a bit of novelty in those names, and you still kind of remember the UFC at that stage, you know, and it kind of like, okay, it kind of brings a little bit of smile to your face if you're a big fan of it, knowing that those guys were the ones like, okay, well, you know, Chuck Liddell, yeah, he was a man, and he'll, he'll always be in your mind captured in that image of when he was at his toughest, and, and, and uh, same thing with Randy Couture. But those are the guys who, who in my mind, I envision are the ones who, who pretty much – in my mind, made the sport what it is today as far as um, the the hard work, the, the grittiness at the same time, the classiness, and the guys that can speak as well, too. So, you know, this sport has grown a lot, but it's going to be growing a lot more because we're not done yet, and it's going to get better and better each and every time, and fights are going to be show, uh, sold on different levels, and it's going to be a whole other entertainment side. You know, I think it's going to grow to the point where people are really getting excited and built up like they do for big boxing fights. Okay, thank you very much, guys. We'll go next to Neil Davidson with the Canadian Press. Yes, thank you. Uh, my question is uh, uh, for both of you, perhaps starting with Rashad. Obviously, you're focused on each other, but you've both said that you want to get your title back. Could you give us uh, your assessment of, of John Jones? A lot of people talk about him as the new breed of, uh, of champion. Rashad, what is your assessment of Jones? I'll let, I'll let Tito go first. Tito? John Jones, I think, is he's an amazing champion, man. He's great. I mean, I hung out with him once in Vegas for the UFC Summit. He's a cool cat. Um, as a competitor, um, he's fast, punches awkward, great wrestling ability. Um, he's a big threat. That's why he's the world champion. Uh, and I have some work cut out for me. And uh, I'm very excited and challenged, I think, uh, to do that. But you know, um, before anything, I, I got to fight Rashad. I mean, Rashad's a double-one contender, man. This is this is his time to shine. You know, all the pressure's on him. His time to shine. He's supposed to beat Tito Ortiz. And uh, uh, I'm here to show why I'm still here, man. And I've been here since 1997. I ain't going anywhere anytime soon. So, you know, on the 6th, it'll be fight time. And we're going to see whose hand you raise. And I know in the fact that's going to be mine. And Rashad? Um, what was the question again? What are your thoughts of the current champion? I don't like John Jones. I'll just leave it at that. Well, there's really nothing more to be said about him, but I just don't like him. Okay, and if I can just have a quick follow-up just to make sure I have my facts straight. Where exactly are you training these days? And, and is it a gym that you have an interest in? Do you own it? No, no, we just train at this gym, uh, Imperial, and uh, it's in Boca Raton, Florida. Mm -hmm. uh, we're probably going to open up our own gym, but for the now, we're just we're just training at this gym, and it's, it's a great facility, got everything that we need, so it, we're not really too much in a big rush to get out of there. 
And what drew you to Boca Raton? Because where you where is your home? Is it Chicago, Michigan? Chicago, Chicago, my home. Chicago. Uh, why Boca Raton? My manager, Glenn Robinson, is out here, and um, you know, a couple guys that left ATT were training here, and we all got together, you know, because uh, my manager manages those guys too, um, Jay Z, George Santiago, Danilo Villafort, Yuri Villafort. And then, you know, we, we all got together, and uh, we started training, and then pretty soon, you know, Mike Van Arsdale came down here, and we just pretty much built a team. And, you know, our team is getting bigger and bigger, bigger and uh, a lot, you know, a lot better. You know, guys are coming all over the world to come and train with us. So it's getting uh, it's getting pretty big, and, and it's, uh, you know, what will start off with like four or five guys is now growing into quite, quite a bit of guys now. So it's kind of exciting, too. Does your team have a name? Yeah, we call ourselves the Black Zillions. I'm sorry, the Black? The Black Zillions. Zillions. Okay, thank you. Good luck to both of you. Great. We'll hear next from ESPN's Franklin McNeil. My question is for Tito. Tito, um, going into this fight, it's been like, what, since 2007 since you fought Rashad. Um, what is what is uh, it about Tito that's better? What is it that makes you, what is different about you uh, that you believe uh, the outcome of the fight will be different than it was the first time? You know, um, I think health has a lot to do with it. You know, being being stronger, being healthier. Um, you know, I was putting in a lot of road work with a bad back, and I don't think that was the right thing to do. Um, I'm training smarter now. You know, I'm training a lot wiser. I'm not making sure I put my body through a grindstone and coming back with a pebble. I'm making sure that I'm putting it through strength and conditioning and, you know, getting in great boxing shape, uh, great wrestling shape. I mean, there's no shape like wrestling shape ever. And uh, I'm there. And uh, I'm a different person. My attitude, I mean, everything's positive, man. I keep my surround myself with great things. Nothing in training. I don't get up going, oh, man, I got to go train today. I get up going, God, I'm going to go train today. Killer. And it's because I'm thankful, man. I'm very, very thankful to be where I am today. Um, and I just feel very, very focused. I haven't felt like this, you know, ever since I was the champ. And, um, like, I'm going to get the best fight I possibly can to get my hand raised. You know, Rashad's going to get the best Tito Ortiz, and the fans are going to get to see the best Tito Ortiz. And it's a build, man. It's all a build. I'm just going from one fight to another, and I feel really, really good. And I'm a different person than I was before, mentally, physically, emotionally, everything, man. I, I just I feel really, really good. Refresh my memory in case I, I didn't get this. When you first fought Rashad, were you saying you, you weren't 100% physically for that fight? I had back surgery literally eight months after that. <laughs> I had two-level fusion, L4-5, S1, where the discs were completely compressed on my spinal cord, in eight millimeters. And if anybody's ever had back problems before, um, they would understand what I'm talking about. Okay, and, and one question for Rashad. Uh, really the same question. Um, You've had you've had nearly you'll have had like nearly fourteen months off, um, and I want to know: Do you think that why won't that be um, a disadvantage for you? And and if not, why would it be? Is it something that you could use to your advantage? The, the time off. Yeah, I definitely use the time off to my advantage. You know, I've been competing in sports since I was probably about fifteen years old, and I've been going season after season. I've had so many seasons back to back. I really haven't had time off, and when you put that much wear and tear on your body, it, it does a little bit of damage. You know, I've, I've been going to camps uh, just in MMA, and I have injury after injury. Like, um, like I pull my, I pull my, uh, my muscle, my uh, I pull my muscle when I when I fought. Uh, what was it uh, Thiago, Thiago Thiago Silva? And then I went into camp, and then I we fought Rampage, and I had the same. Pull muscle, so it, it's just kind of injuries that just kind of build on top of each other. But having this time off allowed me to just let my body heal up and get better in areas where I need to get better, and just take my time doing it. You know, there's so much. You know, when you go to camp, like okay, you're gonna learn this, you're gonna learn that, and all the focus is on camp. But I allow myself to just let the information just kind of seep in, uh, just by training every single day and just enjoying myself, training, and having fun, just get in really good shape. And just really just making a lifestyle of, of the whole training aspect. You know, not traveling too much, just kind of staying where I am and just making a lifestyle out of it. But this 14 months has been really good mentally because it allowed me to miss mixed martial arts a lot. Um, you know, having 
almost had a taste of going in there and fight and then have it taken away. It, it's, it's something that just mentally just kind of builds up in my mind. You know, I've been out the cage for so long, I've been having dreams about it. So I just, I just want to get back in there and fight. We'll hear next from Jeff Wagenheim with SportsIllustrated.com. Yeah, hi, uh, guys. I want to ask Tito a question. Um, Tito, you've, you said that, um, that the pressure, on, pressure in this fight is on, on Rashad because uh, he's expected to win and, and so forth. And that, that all makes sense. But now, going back to your last fight, the pressure was really on you against Bader because everybody was, well, it had been said that if you didn't win, you were gone from the UFC. Uh, you did win that fight. And you've gone from a situation where it was do or die to now there's a possibility of you getting a title shot if you win this fight. I wonder if you could talk about the, sort of the emotional roller coaster of going from, from you know, practically having one foot out the door to possibly um, being one fight away from, from having a, a championship belt wrapped around your waist. Well, I mean, just to correct you, all the pressure is on Ryan Bader. He was supposed to win. <laughs> he was he had to win. Yeah, but he wasn't gonna he wasn't gonna be gone if he. I mean, he still would have been in the UFC if he had lost. I mean, he was a six to one underdog, dude. I was a six to one underdog. I wasn't supposed to win. There was no pressure on me when I came walking out. I was no pressure on me. I didn't think about losing. I knew what I needed to do. I, I put in a great camp. I was positive. It was there was nothing in my mind thinking that I was going to lose at all. Zero chance. I had my friends that go put money on me right now because you're going to win your money tonight. And I remember saying that when that rap the weigh-ins because I knew that Bader didn't want to fight me. I knew that he knew what he was going to get into. I'm a seasoned veteran, man. I've been doing this game for a long time. Every one of my fights, and you look back, besides the two Adele fights that I had that I made some mistakes, every one of my fights I competed against guys to the end of the bell, every one of them. And I look at it against Bader. I knew I was going to, I knew I was going to crush him. I didn't know I was going to knock him down and submit him. I mean, I'll give you that, but I knew I was going to stop him. I knew it was going to be one way or another that I was going to stop him. You know, and once again, this fight comes down to the same situation. I have nothing to lose, man. I'm going out, and I knew I was going to fight again when I fought Bader. I knew I was going to fight no matter what. You know, maybe I had to take a big pay cut, cool, but I was going to fight again either way. But, uh, but when I knew I was going to win, I had no, no doubts at all. I knew when I came walking out that I was going to win. Um, you know, all the weights on Rashad's shoulders, he has to win. He's going to be a next world champion. You know, all the pressure's on him. I'm fine with that. Um, I know what I need to do when it comes to fight time, and that's getting my hand raised. All right. Thank you. Good luck, guys. We'll hear next from Stephen Lieberman with the Observer Newspapers of Los Angeles. Thanks. Uh, this question is for, uh, for you both. Uh, just wondering, uh, who's been the uh, greatest influence in your in your life, and why? And and when did when in your lives did you know that you you wanted to be an MMA fighter? Um, when did I know I wanted to be an MMA fighter? I never knew I wanted to be an MMA fighter. I wanted to be a high school coach and a wrestling or a high school teacher and a wrestling coach. That was my that was all I was going to do. But right back in '96, I think I was training with Tank Abbott as a training partner, and um, I didn't know about doing an MMA. UFC was so new back then. I didn't know what I was going to do. Um, and I watched a guy fighting at Jerry Bolander who I wrestled in high school. I crushed him. I was like, God, this guy's crushing those guys. I want to give it a try. And I started my first time May 30th, 1997. Uh, Tank got me a fight in, and I fought Wes Albritton in uh, what was it, Georgia, and I stopped him in a minute and. I think it was 30 seconds, I think. And I fought Guy Metzger, who was ranked in the world, uh, and was crushing him. Uh, they stopped him for bleeding, and I went for a sloppy shot, and he got me to guillotine, and I tapped. And I mean, that was kind of the beginning of everything. And um, you got to understand, I, I come from not much. You know, I, a kid from being on the street where my parents are drug addicts, and I, I really had to survive, survive with the fittest and be my own, and didn't have much attention as a kid. It was one of those things that when I got into fighting, all that attention that I loved, that I died for my parents, uh, I was getting. So it was kind of like a drug, man. I kind of got addicted to it. And a year and a half later, I became the world champ. I've you know defended world title six times, and I became an icon of the sport. And you know, I look at it as just one of those things that you know when it's fight time and I want to fight, uh, this is something that I kind of fell in love in doing. Is there Tito? Is there one? Is there one person that's been the greatest influence in your life? Um, you know, I think there's been many. Of course, uh, 
But I think the greatest influence is someone that gives back to society, man. Those are the people who I literally look up to. But, I mean, in sports, you know, Ali is a guy who I really looked up to. Uh, Hulk Hogan, you know, um, at pro wrestling, because I've always been a huge wrestling fan. You know, um, I just watch those guys through their eras and through their, you know, the game of fighting, or excuse me, wrestling or boxing, but they've made the best of themselves. You know, they made icons of themselves through the sport. And I'm trying to do the same thing with my name here in MMA, and I think I've done it. And then, Tito, also, uh, which fight in your career gave you the impression that you were in the right business? Um, you know, I think when I fought Frank Shamrock, uh, and he was the world champion, and I dominated for four and a half, or three and a half rounds. <laughs> and the last ten seconds, I got caught, and, and I was tired, and I guess I didn't train how I train now, and, you know, I was a young kid who learned something from a, from a legend, man. Uh, Frank Shamrock is a great fighter and a great champion, and I really uh, learned a lot from him. Actually, after that fight, I went and trained with him, and I think I learned a lot from that fight. Well, who wins between him and uh, who's that boxer he's fighting soon here? Uh... No, 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 no. You're talking about Ken Shamrock. I'm talking about Frank Shamrock, oh, Frank. Okay, his sure. younger brother. Yeah, the one who's a lot, lot better, the one who's actually got skills. Uh-huh. Uh, Tony, yeah, that fight with Tony is going to be funny. Um, well, thanks so much. And, and, um, and uh, Rashad, uh, um, anybody that you can think of who's, your, who's been your greatest influence? Is there one person? Uh, no, I can't really think of anybody that's been my greatest influence. And, I mean, when it comes to competing in the sport you're talking about, is that what you're saying, or, or just in general in life? Hello? Okay. We lost them, Rashad. Let's go ahead and move on to Dave Divert from Post Media News. All right. And, Mr. Divert, your line is now open. All right. Thanks, guys. Um, I got one uh, for, for Tito. Um, you uh, you talk about how, you know, physically you're feeling great. Uh, you know, you came out of the beta fight in uh, good shape. Um, is, is there any challenge um, mentally? You know, you come off such a high, and usually, you know, you get a bit of a break, and, you know, you talked about the night Dana called you. You know, you're sitting there having a drink, watching a movie, uh, getting that relaxing time. Uh, is there any challenge in needing to get, you know, right back? back up mentally so quickly? Um, you know, it took about a good eight, nine hours to realize what was going on. Uh, <laughs> you know, but I think taking a week off, I got a, enough rest. I think it helped me mentally, it helped me physically. Because when I got back in the gym, I, was, I had that hunger again, man. I was like, God, I feel, I feel hungry. I want to do this again. And it was funny because there was times with, during camp that's been really, really challenging. Of course, my trainer, Mike Giovanni and Jason Perillo and um, Ricardo Abreu pushed me really, really hard in certain areas that I've had made mistakes prior to. And I guess I fixed them because they're not as hard as they were a week ago compared to now. Um, and when I was trying to find the energy to, to fulfill those things, Mike could be like, Tito, you know what it felt like to win? And all of a sudden, a bolt of energy would be in my body, and I'd feel that, that, that influence and that reinforcement of knowing, God, it did feel good to win. And that's the hunger back in myself, man. That's that, that I had the tiger, that feeling of you know what it feels like to win, and you got it in. You got the physical skills. You got the mental skills. Now let's use it. And that's not questioning any doubt that I do. And that's going in and putting in the hardest training possible. And thank God I have training partners who mimic Rashad. And, um, you know, I, I'm ready, man. I feel good. I feel really good. And so I don't even think about the Brian Bader fight was almost seems like a year ago. It's only been a month. And I, I've just already plateaued to a certain point right now where the peaking is right here, and the peaking is uh, tomorrow and the next day, and all of a sudden I get to kind of just chill a little bit and start making weight, and bam, fight time, man. I'm stoked, I'm excited, and I'm ready to go. All right. Uh, thanks, Tito. Uh, Rashad, um, just a couple things that you had kind of touched on before. Uh, you know, the energy in a place, fight town like Philly. Uh, and, and then uh, you also said, uh, you know, you've actually had some dreams, um, you know, about, uh, about being out so long and missing, missing the fight game so much. What, uh, what are you most looking forward to uh, come, you know, fight week, uh, fight night? Uh, you know, just as as it gets closer, you know, what what have you really missed um, that you're looking forward to? I missed the uh, 
the emotional roller coaster that you go on. It's like a trip. You know, you, your body ranges from so many emotions to just, you know, you get very introverted and then you kind of, you know, go through these, you know, you, you just, your mind just takes you on a journey because, you know, there, there's times where you even second-guess yourself and then you kind of battle that away and you just go, your mind just takes you on this huge trip. And it's amazing to overcome all of those thoughts, all of those feelings, and trying to harness it in for one moment. One moment when you actually win the fight and your hand is raised and you're just like, everything was all worth it. All of the hard work and sweat and all of that nervousness and anxiety and, and all those feelings of, of anger or, or frustration has, has all amounted to that moment where you got your hand raised and then you just can't wait to do it again. And that is a ride that is so addictive that it makes it hard for anybody to leave the cage. You know, somebody asked Tito Ortiz when it's going to be time for him to walk away, and you never know when it's time to walk away because it's, that's the hardest thing to, to walk away from, that feeling, that emotional high, and that's what, that's what I've been missing. Um, are, are you looking, uh, you know, I say this kind of tongue-in-cheek, but, uh, you know, the last year and some, uh, pretty much everything that's been, when, whenever you've been in the news, it's been either about a fight canceled or some drama, you know, outside the cage. Are you looking forward to people just being able to talk about what you did uh, inside the cage? You know, I'm not really too worried about what people are going to say, because people are going to say what they're going to say. I can't worry about what they want to say, but I'm just looking for that feeling in myself. There's nothing like having that fight, having that win, and just going back to normal life like nothing happened. You know, and then people are still talking about it and your family coming over. Man, you, you know, you were upset with his ass or whatever, and everybody's all excited and buzzing about it, but it seems to you that it just happened so long ago. You know, it's like, dang, and you watch it again on TV and like, man, you don't, it's like an out-of-body experience sometimes, you know, when you're out there. Um, you, you just, it, it, it's just having that feeling Going through it and being done with it, and just you know, uh, it, it's just it's just a journey that I miss, and it's just something that I just can't wait to get back to having him. All right, thanks you guys very much. We'll hear next from Bob Emanuel with Sports Scripts Howard News Service. You know, you had about four and a half years between victories, and that couple minutes after submission over Bader, can you just tell us? What was going through your mind? What were you feeling? What were you thinking? Uh, finally, and thank God, the hard work paid off. All the questions have been answered, and um, my trainer partners are right. I was right. Uh, my family was right. And, you know, um, you can't explain the emotions. There's no emotions at all. Um, you know, um, my heart was so touched just because knowing that I am still one of the guys on top. Uh, I'm, I've always been that in my mind. I've always thought of that in my mind. Even before the fight, people ask me where you see yourself. I go, I'm for sure the top five in the world. I think. I mean, I, I, I feel like that. I mean, I feel strong. I mean, do great against my training partners. I mean, I, I feel really, really good. And when that fight was over with, I looked at it, it was like the hard work paid off. And let's keep doing this hard work. You know, God has his great plans for me. And uh, I just got to keep fo keep my focus and um, just keep my nose to the grindstone and, and make sure that everything stays sharp as it has. And um, uh, you know, just one of those things you can't really explain the feeling just because of the feeling right then everything was on the line. Um, the month before the fight, I thought about it a lot, but when it was fight night, I literally woke up that morning and I was like, "Okay, let's do this. I have nothing to lose. Let's go out and let's fight with your heart and soul." And uh, I felt like an animal, man. I was going out, and I was trying to get my money, my lunch money back. And this guy was in front of me, and when I dropped him, I grabbed the guillotine, and I literally wasn't going to let go until someone ripped me off, and the referee had to rip me off. Um, I wasn't letting go. It was like an animal having his first meal for the first time in and, and, and a long winter, and um, that's what it was, man. I was having my first meal as a fighter, and uh, I wasn't letting go until my hand was raised, and my hand got raised, and... Can't, you can't explain the feeling, man. It's just, just fulfillment uh, like no other. And um, I'm ready to do it again. All right, thank you. I appreciate it. Our final question will come from Spencer Kite with Heavy.com. You know, if you could, just to follow up on that a little bit, so much was made about the injuries over the, over the rough patch of your career, and you said all along 
that it wasn't that you had, had lost anything, it was the injuries and not being able to stay healthy. How fulfilling was it and vindicating was it to get that victory over Bader and with a win next weekend to put you right back at the light, top of the light heavyweight division where you've said you belong all this time? You know, it just, uh, like I say, man, I'm just very, very thankful. I'm thankful for God giving me the skills. I'm thankful for God giving the hands to Dr. William Smith and uh, to be healthy. It's like no other, man. Like I say, when I get up out of bed in the morning before, I would feel like an old man. I'd be getting out of bed moaning and groaning and going, ugh. And I remember when I used to go train with Frank Shamrock, and he had the same study as Tito. Just wait until you get about 35 because you'll start feeling those aches and bruises and you'll be getting out of bed feeling like an old man. And I started feeling like that. And then I was like, wow, is this what he was talking about? But it was because of the injuries. I got them fixed, and they're no longer there anymore. I mean, I get up excited to train. I get up ready to go in and put my work in. You know, we put in three training sessions a day, um, five days a week. The sixth day is, is a half day. But, you know, um, it's it's rigorous. It's uh, grueling training and knowing that I'm in great shape because when I can make it through, you know, six five-minute rounds with 30-second rest with no problem, I'm in great shape. I'm in great wrestling shape. Uh and I'm really, really excited, man. And I just look at it now that, you know, I have proved a lot of people right. And I proved myself right, knowing that I'm able to compete against the guys nowadays. You know, as people say, different generation. I just say I just reinvented myself to adapt to the generation. And that's what I'm doing. All right. Thanks a lot. And for closing remarks, I'll turn the conference back to Mr. Schaller.